Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home. Hey there, welcome back. I'm Matt from the Code Hub. Uh, welcome back to Coding at Home or Augmented Reality at Home, which is what we're going to focus on for the next few few days, weeks, who knows. Um, yesterday we explained a little bit about what Augmented Reality is. It's basically just the ability to place digital objects into your into what looks like the real world through the 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 camera or your app uh, on the iPad, iPhone, uh, what have you. Um, Apple have some great frameworks for dealing with augmented reality. Uh, there's one called Reality Kit, and we'll be playing with a an app that builds those Reality Kit scenes out. Uh, that's what we call our our augmented reality uh, images that we place into a uh, into a scene. We call it a, a scene. So we're going to be working with uh, this app called Reality Composer that where we can create projects that generate scenes for use in ARKit. Um, they also have another framework called ARKit uh, that's a little more low level. Um, I'll show you, I'll give you a little taster of that uh, today. And we'll look at an app that I actually had to do no coding for because Apple provided some sample code. Sample code is a great way to take a lot of the lessons that we've already learned and apply them to your own application. Uh, we can go check out and see how someone else did their version of augmented reality or how they used uh, the sensors in the watch or how they wrote an app for Apple TV. Um, it's a great way to learn code, especially now that you've got a little bit of a foundation with the everyone could code puzzles work that we did and the lights camera code work that we did. So. Before we jump over to the iPad, which is where we always wind up, um, let me show you a little just preview of what might lie ahead for you if you decide to go down this coding route in a little bit more depth. So I'm going to switch over. It's going to look a little bit funky at the start. All right, so this here, you should be seeing my, um, my desktop, and I've got uh, Xcode up which is the development environment when you're working on apps in the Mac. Uh, we've got an app downloaded here. This is the sample code for building a game uh, with Reality Composer uh, for the phone, for the iPad. So um, it looks similar-ish to Swift Playgrounds. And we'll go into this. We'll have another series in a little bit where we talk about Xcode and how to get around Xcode and how to build your very first app in Xcode. So you have that to look forward to. Um, but so we have this project. We have a little readme at the top. This is the project navigator over here. So we can kind of read about what the intention of this particular project is. These should look familiar to you. We've seen these in our Swift Playground so far. These are just Swift files. You can see that this is my app delegate class. Just like in our lights, camera, code, and our assembly your camera uh, playground. This is a subclass of UI responder and this UI application delegate. Not exactly, but close enough. There's a property here, a window, and that's of type UI window. We have a view controller that we saw in our playgrounds. And this has a few, you know, a few funky new things like this at IB outlet. But this should look familiar to you this var AR view, and then it's of type AR view. This is another little funky thing that we'll get into, you know, later down the line. We've got some functions that we override that we did see in assemble your camera and app at home, uh, view did load. So this gets called at a certain point, I'm guessing when the view loaded, we've got some other functions. We've got a handy little menu up here where we can kind of look at all the functions available in this particular class. And what I did was I built and ran this application. So there's some more, there's other, other files here, a game controller an overlay view. We've got our RC project and we'll go into all that stuff later when we talk about, when we talk through things like here, we'll switch back so that we're not going a little crazy. Um, we'll talk about all that stuff when we go into uh, Xcode in a future session. And we talk about building your first app. We'll try to do the same thing we did with everyone can code puzzles and build you up slowly. So I had that sample code 
I went off and built and ran it and have it on one of my iPads here. So let's switch on over and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here's, here's the iPad. All I did with this guy was I plugged it into my, um, my Mac with a USB cable and I hit the little play button. There was a play button in Xcode you might have seen. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You're not missing much. And that built all of the code. So Swift took a look over all of the code that we'd written, um, turned it into something that can run on the device called a binary, and then installed it on my device. So you can see it's here, this Swift Strike TT. So if I tap and open that, I can hit tap to play. I'm going to move the iPad to start. Let's see, we're going to swipe the ball up. Where is the... <laughs> Where is the blank field? It's not over there. Let's try running that again. So what we'll do is quit out of that, see if we can get a playing field. We'll open up Swiss Strike Tabletop again. So we'll move the iPad around a little bit. All right, we're not having a lot of luck. So maybe this is a, a dud of an a, our experience. Let's try it on the floor. Mm, it's just not gonna work for us today, is it here? Not working. All right, that's cool. So but what we'll do is let's take a quick look at what the files look like so we can see what it should have looked like. I think maybe I need a bit more space. And my little recording studio here is maybe not big enough. So I need to put in a request with corporate to get a bigger, um, bigger recording studio. Ah, there we go. All right, cool. So now we've got our Swift tabletop. So we're just going to swipe the ball up. The goal is to swipe here. And this was all done. A lot of this, there was a little bit of code written, um, as we saw in those files. But a lot of this stuff was modeled inside our Reality Composer file. All right, cool. Now I'll hit the next level. Next level adds in these funky little moving things. I'm going to swing the ball. All right, if I go to the next level, I'm going to have hammer swinging. So it gets progressively harder. We go on to the next level. This is the last level. I've got these swirling hockey pucks. And that's it. So this was all done. All the physics and everything, things bouncing off each other. That was all done in Reality Composer. So I could go then, if I wanted to build my own app that was based on, maybe it was similar, maybe it wasn't bowling, maybe it was pool or, or something like that. I could go take that sample code change the Reality Composer file, dig in and maybe have a guess at, at where it looks logical, like, oh yeah, this looks like where we've, um, we had to write code to, you know, show whatever, the game over screen or the next level screen. Uh, go have a look and play around with it. And, you know, the worst thing you have to do is have to re-download the sample code to try again because you need to start over. So let's see, let's go back here. We're gonna go over to our other iPad now because what we're gonna get back to is, so what we're gonna play around with today, that was just a quick example of what you can do with um, ARKit and Reality Composer in particular. Uh, in fact, let's take a quick look while we're just goofing around. We're going to transition back over here. And so this is the, this is that Swift Strike Tabletop app again, right? The whole project. I tapped on this experience.rc project. RC project is just the extension we use for a reality compo composer project. So you can see that 
This actually looks like it's all been laid out visually. I have the option to open in Reality Composer because Reality Composer is an app that's also on the desktop as well as on your iPad. But you can see here are the hammers. Here are those pucks that we're moving around. We have our uh, the other pucks that we're moving just back and forth. If I try to open this in Reality Composer. And this is just a demo. What we'll do is a little bit more hands-on stuff when we get to the AR Maker stuff. But here's Reality Composer. It looks very similar to how it looks on the iPad. I can now go in here and say, tap on a, one of the hammers. And I'll be able to see things like the behaviors. Because we can set behaviors on these different objects. So here we have a winner display. We can set the affected objects that are going to be hidden or shown. We can give them different motion types. And we can see there was a lot of movement in that Swift Strike game. Um, we, can't, we can't see this. Oh, wait, is that what you're showing? Yes. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, I you, think, wait, I don't think we can see the actual... Um, you can't the, see Reality Composer? I don't think we can see the actual like 3D thing. Oh, this thing here. Was it yeah. not too far down the screen? Um, maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right. Go have a look and shout. Say yes if you can see it. Okay. No if you can't. <laughs> so I have my, uh, my quality assurance team downstairs watching the stream, making sure that we can see this stuff. So we're going to go into Reality Composer in a future session, but there's a lot of power built into this, um, this application. And, and the code. And what I'll do is in the link for this video, I'll, I'll provide, a, or in the description of this video, I'll provide a link to the sample code. Okay, it's a little bit too far. You need to move it up just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I moved it up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, I see we're off the screen a little bit. Fair enough, fair enough, okay. So, so anyway, that's, that's, um, reality composer. Sorry. If you couldn't see that there's the 3d object, um, there are the hammers, there's the winner display when you, you complete the whole thing. Um, it's a really powerful tool and here we'll even drag up the bottom so you can see a bit of the bottom. Here are some of the behaviors that you can set. You can set them on mallet zero, mallet one, mallet two. Now, you might remember why we'd name it Mallet Zero um, from our arrays lesson back in Everyone Can Code Puzzles. Um, we talked about uh, how arrays start at zero, right? So our first first object in the array is going to be uh, the object at the index of zero. All right, so that's that's our um, quick tour of Reality Composer. Let's go play around with AR Maker a little bit today. All right, so we're back on our iPad here, which thankfully I've got hooked up much better than the desktop because I've never shown you my desktop before. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's open up AR Maker. So we downloaded that the other day. I have it over here. You might have it down here in your dock. I'm gonna hit start. So let's let's do this in honor of the the SpaceX and NASA joint mission yesterday. Even though it didn't go ahead, um, we're gonna tap on a space mission today. So we can see some of the elements that we're gonna get in this mission. This is kind of cool. I also like some of the work that the guys downstairs, my excellent crack QA team, uh, did yesterday. So let me bring this thing up and detect a flat surface. We'll move some of the table mess that we have there. All right, so that's cool. I think we'll use that table as our surface. We'll maybe pretend that it's the moon. We'll also move that thing out of the way so I can tap on my objects. We'll make it a bit smaller so we can fit more things in there. I can hit place. Now, if I hit this other button here, I can... I think I can move that up and down, can I? I 
There, we'll grab another object. Let's see, what else will we have on the moon? Oh, I do like that funky looking donut. We'll add this thing on the moon. So if I tap this button over here, uh, before I place it, then I can give it a certain height above the surface. So let me place it so it's just sort of floating there. Um, same thing, I'm going to have maybe uh, this cool looking comet. I'm going to go and tap that button so I can move it around the space. I'm going to put it over here. And I'll have it up above. Now, you can see I'm building my scene up slowly. I've got my lunar lander. I've got my squiggle. I've got my comet. Um, I want the comet to move, though. I really like that, that uh, functionality of the Swift uh, the table game, the, the bowling game. So I want to make that move. So if I go and tap on any one of these elements, you can see that this object down here changes. I can tap over here on my squiggle and it can change. Well, I want to tap on the comet because I want to get that to orbit. And this is what I love that they were doing downstairs yesterday. So I tapped on this down here and I have a few animations I can give this, this thing. So I could have it blink, that's maybe not how uh, comets behave. I could have a pulse. That's also not really how uh, comets behave. Spin left, spin right, vibrate, or this. Maybe this is what I wanted to do. I want that to orbit. So that's cool. We're going to stick with that. So we've got our comet orbiting us. This would be a really fun thing to do either in your classroom if you're a teacher or a student. Um, it'd be fun to model the planets orbiting and place them in different rings. You could create your own planets. You could either grab um, a planet like, let's see, let's grab the moon. So maybe we're not. We'll move this guy over here to the very far corner and we'll bring it way up. So maybe we're not on the moon. We're, I don't know where we landed. Maybe we're on Earth and that's the moon. Maybe we missed. Or maybe that's Mars. So there we go. If I walk around, I can see the different sides. I can see the shadow of my squiggle, the shadow of the lander. I can see that the comet is down below there, and I have to look up a little bit to get to the moon. And then I can do the same thing. If I tap down here, I can change the animations. So maybe for whatever reason we're having a little moon quake. So that'll be shaking above us. That wouldn't be frightening at all if you were landed in a lunar lander on what you thought was the moon and then you looked up and saw the vibrating moon up there. So I'm going to go create another new object. The thing that I found hardest when I came to augmented reality was finding good assets. Uh, in one of my early demos, I did a demo with a guy named Max the Fox that I stole off of some Apple sample code. He was originally in a 3D game. And I just took the assets and they, they work, those assets work really well with augmented reality and AR kit. So I took those over and put them in a playground. Um, because to build a 3D character, I'm not, that's not what I do. I'm not a 3D artist. Um, but it's definitely one of the hardest things to do when you're thinking about building an augmented reality experience is how do you get those assets? Well, one of the nice things I like about AR Maker is that they have them built in for you. So you can kind of say, you know, design your own. I've got a cylinder here. I've got my, my, uh, sphere, which I'm probably going to use in this case because I'm trying to build a planet. I know again, somebody downstairs built a very cool, that's not red. That's not blue. Built a very cool uh, version of Earth. Just by coloring this in. Here, we'll do this very quickly. This again, this is where, for all you guys out there who know Bob Ross, the kind of famous painter, um, this is where you can tell that I wish I was Bob Ross because I like, I'm painting for you guys in the middle of this thing. He was famous for his trees.
And I'm going to stop talking about Bob Ross because uh, I think my kids are going to try to have me committed if I keep talking about Bob Ross. And they'll use this as evidence against me. All right, so there's my blue planet anyway. I can rotate it around. It's looking a bit more filled in now. Uh, I can add maybe a bit of bit of green in here. Let's drag down to there. Yes, this is a funky looking Earth. There's Atlantis in the middle. And whatever that is, if we turn it around, that looks good. I think that, that looks like a great Earth. We're going to pick that by hitting this check mark. So it's been saved and is ready for AR. This is where AR Maker really is one of my favorite favorite apps because it's it's so nice that it it lets you author these objects just with the touch of a button. All right, so there's my ooh boy. There's something wrong with my uh, planet, isn't there? Cool. I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. Okay, this scene is getting even worse for the uh, the poor astronauts because. Not only have they got the squiggle, they've got the shadow of the Earth down there. They've got the moon still vibrating slightly. They've got a comet in between the Earth and themselves. This is kind of frightening. One really interesting exercise you could do with this is take AR Maker, build out your scene and come up with a little story idea for this. And you can drag down from the top right corner here. And now if you don't have it enabled, you might have to go get it enabled. So here I don't, this is what's called a control panel. I don't have anything um, enabled here to let me do screen recording. So what I would do is I would go out of here, go back to settings, go back to settings, go to settings for the first time, hit control center. And I can customize these controls because I want to record my scene. So what I would do is I would add, I'd hit the green plus button by screen recording. And then what I can do is now I can back out of there, open up AR Maker again. I've got all my elements back. I can drag down from the top right again, and now I have a new button well, that I'm not able to use in Air Maker. That is a huge bummer. It might be because I'm on the, the dock connector. But what would be very cool if you can do it, and I'll have to test this out a little bit later, is uh, screen record your, your application. So let's just test this out. Let's verify. Yep, yeah, I think because I'm on the dock connector, I'm not able to do this. But if you press and hold on here, there'll be an option to turn on the microphone because you'll want to record your your narration of your story while you're telling it. So what I would do is press and hold that screen record button and then talk us through your story. And I'd love to see it. I'd love for you to post it to uh, live at the codehub.ie or drop it to us on the discussions board. I'd love to see what you do with this and I'd love to see your um, augmented reality scene. So let's see, we'll add just a couple more things while you're goofing around with your own, because obviously you're not recreating mine exactly. Um, you, you're you probably creating your own. I'm going to create a, a rocket ship to get these guys out of here. Again, using this button over here, we'll toggle between moving horizontally and then moving up and down. And maybe that's what I do. If I place that there, if I tap on that guy, I'll tap on him. No, oh, I'm not able to tweak it. Thought I'd be able to tweak it. So I'd have to add another one and, and sort of simulate. What I might do is narrate it, add this guy here, and then have it take off when I'm finally ready to get out of here. All right, so let's create one last one with an image. Let's grab a... Hmm. Let's see. Let's add bike to our scene. Oh, 
okay, that doesn't look like the right image. Here, what we'll do is we'll get back out of that. Confirm, we're going to cancel out of that. Let's try that again. Actually, you know what? Let's add this guy. This is our Max the Fox. This is the guy that I borrowed from the Apple sample code. Any time did Max get downloaded? Not yet. So close, so close. There we go. All right, there's Max. We're going to maybe add Max to a cylinder. Oops, not that. All right, we're going to add it back to a cylinder, maybe a cone. Actually, the cone looks pretty good, so we'll select that. So we're going to pick our new object. Oh, where is Max the Fox? There it is. Cool, maybe not exactly what I was looking for. And we'll place Max the Fox there. Kind of looks like it's on its side. It's not exactly what I wanted. Not bad, I can go, go around and kind of check them out. All right, so that's, that's uh, AR Maker. Um, it's a ton of fun, really fun playing around with this, this um, application. Uh, it can really show you where you might want to take your augmented reality experience. What we're going to do in the next session is we're going to work through Reality Composer and look at some of the assets that they have for us that we can play around with and um, start to figure out maybe how we can uh, write some code to, to add things and to have them react to things. The really nice thing about Reality Composer is that we can add a lot of those behaviors like we did with our um, the moon, how we had it vibrate, and that comet, how we had it orbit. We can add a lot of behaviors to those objects without any lines of code, which is huge because someone else has done the heavy lifting for us. Um, a lot of really smart engineers at Apple have done um, all those, have written all those functions, all those classes, all the interactions between those types for us to be able to say, hey, I want this thing to wiggle and it'll go off and, and wiggle for us. Or I want it to interact with other objects like they would in the real world. So like if you think of, um, uh, pool balls like uh, billiard balls when they crash into each other they're gonna go off in different directions we can use reality composer to set that up so that they'll behave just like we saw with the the swift tabletop game earlier so definitely play around with air maker we'll have a link to that in the the description we'll also have a link to um the creating a game with reality composer so if you do have a mac and you have xcode you can download it and give it a shot. Um, if you don't, or you don't have Xcode and you're not sure where to start, don't worry. We're gonna have a video about sort of introduction to Xcode pretty soon. And um, we'll add a link to that there when we when we come up with it. All right, I hope you had a lot of fun with AR Maker. I really love augmented reality. It's so much fun playing around with that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot we can do with it and we will be doing a lot with it over the next probably couple weeks. All right, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow.